Well, Tashi Delay, everybody. Get hooked up here. And welcome to our last of part four. And we're going to be talking today about some of the embellishments of the sadhana practice. And so we'll be looking again at the white dakini sadhana and talking about the use of the bell and the drum. as well as some things about hand mudras that are sometimes used in conjunction with these. We'll also be talking a little bit today about some more on the sexual yoga practices, a little bit on that, and the Tsok or Ganachakra feast. We'll take a look at some of that as well as talk about some signs of accomplishment. So as we do these practices, it's sometimes helpful to have an idea of what it is that you're trying to achieve with this. So we will be doing that as well. So I'm going to hand out this little handout. Uh, gives a summary here of these. You know, one more for John. Do you have a copy of the one that you did last I do have a couple extras. So this handout has on it some information about just general approaches to using the bell and drum in a sadhana. The actual practices will sometimes indicate that. Most actually don't. So it's helpful to have a guideline like this to figure out, well, when is the appropriate time to do that or not do that. And so as you can see here, we have uh, six categories. The first one, when we actually invite the deity. So early in the practice, we will invite the deity to come. And when we do that, that is an appropriate time for using both the bell and the drum. And oftentimes, that's written in a somewhat poetic fashion. Usually, the translations aren't that poetic. But the original is often done in a rather poetic fashion. And it's done in verses. Those verses often, but not always, are in line, four lines. And so what we usually do is at the end of that is when you use the bell and the drum. And so it's usually at the end of every fourth line in that invitation process, assuming it has more than four lines. Now occasionally I was looking at one, for example, that the first verse actually had five lines. And so you did it at the end of the fifth line, not the fourth line there in the middle of that verse. So it's at the end of the verse is when you actually do that. And then the second one is when the deity bestows the blessings. You know, after we've invited them, one of the things that they do is they bestow blessings on us. And so when they bestow those blessings, we also use the drum and the bell. And then the third one is when we're making offerings to them. So as we make offerings, sometimes we make offerings before the actual meditation, sometimes we make offerings again after that. But whenever we make the offerings, we often do those. And that can be done either with just the bell or with the combination of the two. And often that is extended after that a little bit. So it's a longer kind of a, a use. And then the fourth one is for making praises. And so when we have verses of praise, those are usually done after the meditation, although sometimes they're done prior to that. And so when we do those, again, it's typically done in verse. And so we would do it at the end of each fourth line or the end of each verse there. And then the fifth one is when the deities are delighted or pleased. And so sometimes we see that in there. And so again, that's a time. But in this case, just the drum not the bell, just the drum is used. And then finally, it's very often we will use the drum at the, and the bell at the very last line. So at the completion of the practice, if you will, it is done for a while. Now there may be other specific cases depending on the text and what's included, what's not. And of course, 
Each of these can be done somewhat different. There are every rule, there's many exceptions in Buddhism. So uh, depending on what the Lama suggests is the appropriate place to do it, that's what you do. Uh, as I mentioned, there are a few that actually indicate in the text itself, either through symbols or words, where the appropriate place is to use those. And so, for example, here, casting out obstructive spirits might be one where it is used. We use the bell and the drum at the end of the mantra where you actually literally cast them out. And when creating the circle of protection early in the practice, when we're doing that, and often there's a mantra associated with that, so at that time we would use both of those as well. Another exception, though, is when we're doing daily practices, typically we don't use the drum, just the bell. Okay? So little things like that, but this gives you at least a general idea of where to insert those. So as you go through the practice, you can look at it and you can in see where those would be appropriate to use those. So now what I want to do is go through the actual sadhana, the white bikini. And in this one, the places are actually indicated in the text where to use those. Um, one more there. Well, we need one. Is there another one? That's the last one here. You can kind of look at mine a little bit. And so at the beginning of the sadhana, we have the uh, mantra of increasing mantras and the four thoughts of turn to mind, refuge, outer refuge, inner refuge, secret refuge, and most secret refuge. None of those use it. And then we have bodhicitta. That's not used there or it's not used with the Vajrasattva mantra. And it's not then until we get to the offerings on page four that we first use that. And so at the end of the outer offerings is an appropriate place. Now this one does not indicate here that that is a place to use it. So that might be an optional thing because it doesn't say use it here. Uh, but it is traditionally done with the offerings. And so you can do that with both the bell and the drum after the Om Shapta Ah Hong with music. And so you would do that. And so as you're going through those, uh, when you get to the end of that, then you would have Om Shapta Ah Ho. So you would do it for a short while. And then there's the inner offerings, Om Maha Mamsa Rakta Goritsana King Niriti Shukra Pudza Ah Ho. And then Om Benza Pema Banza Pudza Ah Hong. And then Om Tata Gata Garba Ah Hong. And then at the end of that, typically then we would do a quick burst right there at the very end of that. Now, the other thing is that there are mudras, hand gestures, that are used with some of these. It's a little difficult to do both the hand gestures and the bell and drum at the same time. In fact, even just using the bell and drum at the same time can take a little bit of practice, so you need to have those and, and practice with that. The drum, by the way, doesn't really have a handle, it just has a little piece of fabric coming down that you hold on to, and then you rest it between your thumb and forefinger. And you really just twist your fingers back and forth a little bit. And slowly, or it's easier to actually twist your wrist if you're doing it more slowly. But if you're doing it quicker, you can use your fingers to do that. So, but you just hold it with your fingers in your hand. Oftentimes they come with a little hanging banner at the end. Sometimes they're sold separately. You add those. It's helpful to have that in that it, it helps hold the handle down. It's easier to actually hold on to the handle if you do that. And you want to make sure the tips of your thumb and finger are below the actual little uh, 
pieces that are on the band that goes around in between the, the two sides of the drum. If you get your fingers over the top, they start getting tangled up with each other. So you need to be just a little bit below that. And it's almost like it's just resting there, but you need the stability of that other piece in your fingers to hold it. But you're not holding it up with that, you're just kind of steadying it a little bit with that. And some of them are more round. This one's a little more oblong, even almost diamond shape. It has some kind of pointed shapes in it. Some of them are more oval. Some of them are more circular in shape. The actual shape doesn't really matter that much. So that is the drum. The, the bell, I think I showed you before, but just to remind you, there is a face on the bell. The face and the handle of the bell should always be facing toward you. And so basically, you hold it with your middle finger and thumb right above that. And then your index finger goes on the little pointed part up above. And then one or both fingers go on the back just down by the, the bell piece. And you do it by rocking it back and forth. And it doesn't really take very much effort to do that. Uh, another way to do it in some things, the bell is used rhythmically, not in what we're doing here. And you can do that through a kind of pattern, just allowing it to, to ring with a little bit of practice. But another way to do it that's actually a little bit easier is you hold the bell sideways and you actually just use the, the thing to ring it just by holding it with your other hand and doing it that way. So there's different ways to actually use the bell, um, but those are the, the basic approaches to doing that. And then the mudras. The, I wanted to talk about the mudras. There are eight mudras. If you look online and get copies of this, and there are some on YouTube, there are some pictures, photos of these available, there are different varieties of the actual mudras. So the fact that I'm going to show you one set of mudras doesn't mean that that is the only way that they are done. So you may have a lama that shows you a different way to do these. But these are the eight traditional offerings in India. When a guest arrived at your home, you would make these offerings. So you would give the water for drinking and washing, the flowers, incense, the butter lamp, the perfume, the food, and the music. And so the first one, if the water for drinking is done by taking your index finger and thumb, making two circles, and then touching the tips of the other ones together. You can think of it as being like holding a couple of small glasses of water. Okay, that's the way I imagine it, to remember what it is. Okay, so that's water for drinking. So as you say, Om Argam Ahong, you would do this. The next one is padyam, water for washing, and you just take your hands, take the left hand, drop it down, and place the tips of the fingers in the palm. Okay? Now some of them release the fingers for doing that, but the easy way is to just change and place the fingers in the palm, a little bit like you're washing your hands, okay? You just put them together that way. And then flowers. The flowers then, once you're here, you just take your fingers and you make a flower with your fingers. There are some other ways of doing that, but the fingers are just loose here together, not touching anything, okay? And just forming like the petals of a flower. The next one is the incense. And so changing this into incense is simply a matter of pointing a finger. Okay? The index finger. <laughs> okay? So the index finger sticking out, so that becomes the incense. And the next one is the butter lamp. So the butter lamp, we use our thumb and we put it up, pull the fingers in, that becomes the butter lamp, the flame on the butter lamp. So that's an easy one to do. And then we do perfume, or scented water, it's sometimes called. And perfume in this particular version, we take our fingers and put it somewhat back like the water for drinking. So with the right hand, you put the index finger and thumb back together, and the, on both hands actually, and then we pour that down this way. Okay? And then the food, 
is like a plate. So we turn our hands back over, putting them side by side, flatten them out. Okay, no, no thumb index finger, just flat. It's an offering. Okay, a plate. That's the food. And then finally, the music is a drum. And so we bring in our fingers until we just have two extended together, the index and middle fingers together, and we go like this, like a drum. Okay, so that's the music. All right, let's try it again, one right after the other. So we have water for drinking, water for washing, flowers, incense, butter lamp, the perfume, food, and music. All right, very good. <laughs> okay, so it takes a little bit of practice to get used to those. It's easier to do it when the prayer is arranged this way. In a little bit, we'll see where there's a version where you have Om, Argam, Pajam, and you go right through really quickly, and it's a little bit harder to do all of those mudras uh, that fast as you go through it in that form. But when it's arranged this way, where you do one at a time, it's much easier to do those mudras. So I encourage you to do that practice. So that's all on page four. And on page five, down at the bottom, now we're into the specific preliminaries here. And down at the bottom, we have the light radiating out from our heart to summon and draw in the demonic forces. And there's a mudra associated with that one. And the mudra, we take our fingers and we have them spread apart a little bit and it's kind of like making a figure eight with them so first take the right hand and it's like you're making the end of the figure eight and as you bring it over then we take the left hand and make it over in a figure eight and we bring them over one side then the other they're actually both making figure eights if you will so if I just do my right hand it's going like this, okay? Oh. And then my left hand is also doing that, okay? Just a figure eight, just a loop after a loop or like an infinity shape, okay? So we're going back and forth. And then when you put them together, it's like the palms are facing each other when you do it, okay? So it's here and then here and then here and then here. The other dimension, <laughs> to add one more little piece of complexity is that your fingers also rotate down this way, okay? So the, the index finger kind of leads followed by the middle finger, ring finger, and pinky finger. So they kind of rotate down as they, as they come, okay? So if you're doing the whole thing, it's better to start simply but it's just going around and around and just let your fingers kind of follow over the top and down and around that way, okay? And then you conclude by bringing them together at the very end, the fingers come around together this way, okay? And just touch the little fingers together there, okay? Now this is a fairly short one. Some of these are a little bit longer, which makes it easier. But basically you're doing sarwa balinta ka ka, and then with the kahi kahi, just bring them back around together. Okay? So sarwa balinta ka ka kahi kahi. All right? The other thing is to use the bell at the end of that. And again, it's a little bit harder to do these. The llamas will hang on to the bell. And so they'll have the bell in the, the, at the corner of the thumb and the index finger, and they'll do it this way, okay? And then they can ring the bell. Oops, getting it going wrong way. Right at the end of that. But at the end of this, another one, in this case, again, it does not designate that that's a point to do it, but at the end of summoning these demons is another place that we sometimes ring the bell. 
the next place, on the next page then, we continue this. Now we cast out the obstructive spirits. And so there's a traditional four mantra that we use for doing it. And it indicates with this one, we snap the fingers of the left hand. And so it's just a snap at the end. Om Sumbani Sumbani Hong Pei. Om Grihana Grihana Hong Pei. Om Grinapaya Grinapaya Hong Pei. Om Aya uh, Ho Bhagawan Vidya Radha Hong Pei. And we snap again. And this one, it is indicated here, is followed by the drum and bell. So again, together. There we go. <laughs> Haven't been doing that for a while. <laughs> So we've cast out the obstructive spirits now. The next one is to uh, create the wheel of protection. When we create the wheel of protection, as you recall, I said sometimes in doing that we also have one. And so I wanted to show you there is, in addition, uh, here where we say the five poisons are transformed into the five wisdoms as the wheel of protection, that's where you would do the bell. Now, some versions have a mantra associated with that. This one doesn't. But then there's a mantra after that. This mantra after that, though, is a blessing of the wheel of protection. So it's a little bit different. And so here we do the same thing that we did before with the hand, that kind of figure eight thing with the fingers going back and forth. And it's Om Nama Sarva Kaya. And then it changes. There, it changes to up and down. You're doing the same thing, but you're going up and down. Okay, so up and down and up and down. So it's Om Nama Sawa Kaya Girti Niti Hong Kaya Giri Giri Girti Niti Hong. So up and down with it. Okay. So and that one is the blessing of the wheel of protection. So it's just sideways and then doing it up and down. Okay? And the other one on that page is at the bottom of page six. Again, we have the offerings, the eight offerings. And so here's the one where they are all strung together. So we have Om Argam Padyam Pupe Dupe Alake Gante Nevade Shapta Ahom. Okay? So you do the one right after the other if you can, but it's okay not to do that. And if you're doing the bell and drum with that, then it's better just hang on to the bell and drum. And at the end, you can go ahead and just ring that for a little bit. The, then we have a period in here where we have some other things that we're not doing that. We get into the main practice. We go through all of those pages. And until we get to the offerings on page 9. So on page 9, we have the first offering. So to the divine host of the mandala of Vajrahi, they make outer offerings. And so here we have the same outer offerings again. Oma hong argam padyam pupe dupe alake gande nevade shapta putsa ho. And we repeat that three times. And so at the end of each one of those, we do that. Now, some lamas will start that a little bit before they get right to the end of that, and that's okay, too. And then we've got four offerings here. So again, we go through the next one, Om Hong Maha Mamsa Rakta Gortsana King Niriti Shukra Pudza Ho, and we have it at the end of each of the three repetitions. We do it again. And then we have the secret offering, Om Ah Hong Benza Pema Panza Puza Ho, again there. And then the most secret offering there, Om Ah Hong Tatakatakara Puza Ho. Okay, so we do that with the offerings. 
And then there is one, there's a verse of praise that starts at the very bottom of page 9. And so at the bottom, it starts out, to the enlightened bodily form of Ajavarahi, arisen from luminosity, and so forth. And it indicates there, at the end of that, I bow down. And it has the bell. So, ringing the bell. And then the uh, mantra recitation and the dissolution, we don't use the bell for that. And then we have closing prayers. Now there are some sadhanas at the end here, we'll have additional verses of praise. Uh, this one does not have any of those in it. So there's actually no places in this particular sadhana where we use the bell and the drum again as a part of this, except we could do it at the very end, as I indicated, at the end of the dedication. And we would only do that once, though. We repeat the dedication three times, but then we would say on the third one, with the mind of enlightenment, bodhicitta, I dedicate all merit from this practice for the enlightenment of all sentient beings. So we get those in there. I like to let the bell actually ring a little bit at the time when we're doing that and let it kind of get quieted down before I proceed to the next one. Uh, but when you're doing it in a group, you usually just go ahead and proceed right on uh, as a part of that. So that is the basic approach to using the bell and the drum and as a part of sadhana practice. As I mentioned, if you're doing the daily practice, there's usually not as many of these things in there because it's a very short practice. And traditionally, we only use the bell as a part of that. But one of the nice things about doing the longer practice then is that you are able to add the ritual associated with it, the bell, the drum, the mudras, and so forth, which really enriches the practice as a part of that and it can, as a result, make it a more interesting and in some cases rewarding experience for you. So I encourage you to get a bell and a drum and practice doing that as well. <laughs>